we continue to update um, all of our new webinar series. So, but today we're gonna talk about lawns. Um, and you can see I got a lot of stuff in front of me that I wanna show you all about. Um, specifically, what I'm gonna talk about today is our summer lawns. Um, so the funny thing about Hampton Roads is we're a transition area. So what that means is you can actually grow a lot more types of grasses here than in other parts of the country, uh, which makes us very unique and very different. Um, and a lot of people are going to the summer lawns and summer lawns are, are grasses that um, I'll tell you about, um, but they will grow in the summertime. So they typically are gonna start to green up right about now, mid April, and then they will stay green all the way until about October, November, and then they'll start to go dormant. Um, and so, so they, they grow in that, that warmer time frame. And as you all probably know, if you've lived here long enough, Hampton Rose can get pretty hot um, and our humidity can be pretty bad. Um, but uh, these grasses can take it, and that's what we're going to talk about is summer lawns. Now, if you're interested in fescue lawns, we'll do a series of that in the fall. Um, hopefully, we'll, we'll be able to provide those classes in store, um, but if not, we'll do it right here on the webinar series. So I'm not going to talk too much about fescue. I will tell you real quickly and briefly, fescue is uh, probably the best way to get the evergreen lawn in this area. Um, which means it will give you provide you the most amount of green for the entire portion of the year. Um, fescue is a cool season grass, so it likes the temperatures and the moisture that we're getting right now, um, and it'll like it again in the fall, and it does very well in the winter months as well here. Summer is where fescue struggles, and so fescue is a little bit more of a northern grass. And then down south, which is what we're going to talk about today, are your zoysia, your St. Augustine, centipede, and Bermuda. And those are our four summer grasses that we recommend that you can grow in this area. Um, but fescue, again, is going to give you the most amount of green, uh, but it is also individual plants. And so what I always tell people when they're growing a fescue lawn is it, it's going to be a little bit more maintenance, it's going to be a little higher on the maintenance, whereas your summer lawns are a little bit lower maintenance. Um, and because you're probably going to be overseeding every fall season, um, or hopefully we can get you to the point where you're only doing it maybe every two, for two or three years, then you can take two or three years off. Um, but fescue does take some time to kind of build up that population of grass. Each individual plant, they're all, so you're taking care of millions and millions of plants, uh, whereas some all your summer grasses are spreaders, which means if something happens, if you lose a portion, it'll spread back in. And that's what's so cool about these grasses, and that's what we're going to concentrate our effort on now. So if you're interested in fescue, I'm not going to talk too, too much about fescue today. Um, I'm really going to focus on our summer grasses in this area. Um, so let's go through the list of those four types of grasses again. Zoysia is a very, very pretty grass. Um, zoysia is probably one of the most ornamental of the summer grasses. Uh, we carry it in plug form as well as in seed. Um, so you've got two different options there. Zoysia is really, really pretty. You can mow it to about one and a half to two inches, so it can be very low. It doesn't grow very aggressively, which means um, it doesn't need to be mown as much. The downfall of it not growing very aggressively means it's gonna take a little bit of time to kind of really get going. Um, so that's kind of the hard part about zoysia is it takes a long time to kind of get established. St. Augustine has become extremely popular in this area. Now St. Augustine can only be grown by plug form. Uh, they do make a seed. It is very, very expensive. And so it's just not even economically, doesn't make sense. Um, so we don't offer seed. It's very hard to get to get a hold of anyways. Uh, so plugs are the most, uh, the, the best way to grow St. Augustine. And we do carry those. Uh, we carry those right now all the way through, probably depending on the year, and depending on the weather, and depending on how many we sell. Um, we typically will have them uh, through the month of May into June sometimes. So we've got plenty of time. And right now is a great time to start thinking about your summer lawns, and that's why we're talking about it. And then there's Bermuda. So Bermuda is kind of one of my favorites because, because Bermuda naturally grows here. So if you've ever pulled up a, a blade of grass that you don't want in your flower bed and it just pulls up a whole wire, a lot of people call it wire grass. Uh, wire grass is our native Bermuda. But what I tell people is Bermuda naturally grows here. It's one of the only desirable lawn grasses that naturally grows in this area. So if it naturally grows here, it must like this area. And so that's why I love Bermuda. And then centipede would be the last one. Centipede, I don't carry a plug, so I won't be able to show you an image of that. Um, but centipede is a little bit of a lighter color green grass. Um, it's a very easy grass to grow as well. We do carry it in seed. Um, I won't probably talk about centipede too, too much uh, because it's not as uh, sought after uh, compared to zoysia, St. Augustine, and Bermuda. But we'll, we'll touch on it as we go along. Um, so if you're thinking about height, uh, I mentioned zoysia gets about... Uh, you can mow it at about two to one and a half inches, so it's a very low-growing grass. 
uh, uh, St. Augustine is about um, a two and a half to three inch grass, so a little bit taller. Bermuda can be grown in a wide range, two inches to four inches, depending on the variety, and I'll talk about that in a minute, um, about the different types of grasses that you can grow, uh, or the different types of Bermuda that you can grow. Um, and so you've got a little bit of versatility and height. And then centipede is about a one and a half to two inch height as well, similar to zoysia. Um, so those are kind of the four different grasses uh, that we'll be talking about as we go through this. But really what I want to kind of start off with is kind of a planogram, um, some step by steps um, that will give you kind of the best results and have the best looking lawn on the block. Um, and so what I want to do is go through um, our, our traditional warm season lawn care calendar. And we're going to make this available on our website so that you can download this and print this off or just save it on your computer. This is a really handy little tool. It's a small little piece of paper. It's going to tell you about what, what you do month by month or basically in a month or a two or three month period. Uh, but it's going to tell you how to basically start a lawn. So if you're, you've got to re, you know, re, rejuvenate your entire lawn, if you want to do different steps, this will give you a very quick rundown. This is kind of our basics. If you want to do what the, the, the littlest amount but still be very successful, this is going to be a great information for you uh, because it's going to give you a step-by-step -step of what you want to do to kind of get a very good lawn. Then we're also going to publish, we'll also put out there our how to maintain a warm season lawn. Now this goes month by month, every single month. So it's double-sided. Um, it, it's got a lot of information. It, it might be a little bit daunting. Uh, and what I tell people is just read through it so you kind of know. And it helps if it's like, hey, it's June, what should I be doing? Then this is a great kind of calendar to kind of help you work through all those different things. Uh, again, this is if you want to do everything, but you don't have to do most of this. Really what I wanted to talk about is this smaller kind of calendar that's very easy to kind of understand and kind of work through. Um, and then also we'll publish our uh, plug in your lawn. So if you want to plug in, if you want to do plugs, this is just information about plugs. I will talk about a little bit of this as well. Um, but these three pieces of information here will be made available so that you can download them and you can view them on our website um, shortly after this class. So you'll have that information available to you as well. But what I want to do first is kind of go through that step by step of how to start a lawn. So let's say I always tell people if your lawn is 50% weeds or more, then it's probably a better idea to start from scratch. Um, if you've been trying to grow St. Augustine or been trying to grow zoysia or Bermuda for years, or maybe you're just giving up on fescue, which is, is, is very uh, understandable, um, then I do recommend starting from scratch. And what that means is we're going to go to our first step. And our first step is killing the grass. Um, so killing the grass is, I know it sounds kind of uh, daunting, but it's a very easy step that you can do. Um, and I'll talk about, as we go through this, there's some traditional methods, which are, you know, our man-made fertilizers and our weed killers and stuff like that. But then there's also organic uh, solutions as well. So we carry both options. A lot of times I'll talk about the traditional method um, as being a good option to just do it once and be done with it. Um, like kills all. Kills all is going to kill everything it touches. So very similar to Roundup, but kills all is a higher concentrate, goes a much further, uh, goes a lot further, um, and you get your money's worth for this. So, I mean, this bottle, this is a 32 ounce bottle, it's $19.99. So if you ever, you know, bought one of those Roundup, you know, pump and goes, this will make like 10 of those. So for $19.99, you can get a lot of, of square footage covered uh, with this Kills All. Kills All is an awesome product made by High Yield, uh, one of our favorite brands. Um, so kills all is what I would recommend to kill your entire lawn. So let's say we're starting from scratch and we got to start, you know, and we got to kill everything off. And what you're doing there is you're eliminating a lot of the weeds, some of the competing grasses, because ultimately what we're going for here is a lawn of all one type of grass. To the eye, what a good lawn is, is all one color, all one type of grass. Um, so if you, if you have a natural lawn, which is fine, natural lawns are great and we promote that. Um, but if you're growing a natural lawn, you know you're going to see some patches of some darker green, some lighter green, and that is what kind of you know throws the eye off a little bit. But if you want a really truly good lawn, then you want all the lawn to be one color, which you attain that by getting all of one type of grass. So when we're starting from scratch, what you're going to do is kill everything off, and that will completely eliminate all of those weeds and any other competing grasses and give you a very good blank slate to start your, your lawn on. So kills all is what we'd recommend. If you're looking for an organic solution, we do have a uh, non-selective by Natural Guard uh, weeding grass killer. This will kill everything it touches as well. Um, completely organic, completely safe. 
So you don't have to worry about anything there. Um, if you are, if you do want to do the traditional method, um, if you've got pets and you're worried about your pets, just keep your pets off the lawn until it's dry and then it's safe. Um, and this will work in about six to seven days. You should see the complete lawn, uh, the, 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 the grass and the weeds completely gone. Um, and so that's what we would recommend. So once we've completely decimated, you know, our, our existing lawn um, or, or weeds is, is most likely is what it is there. Um, then we want to get that out of there. And so one of the easiest methods is really putting uh, your mower to the lowest uh, setting and then just mow over the entire thing. Chop it all up. It'll decompose. It'll, it shouldn't create thatch unless you've got a lot of vegetation there. Um, and then I might recommend mowing it and bagging it. Um, it's a great way to kind of do it. This is where I'll talk about tilling because a lot of people love to till and tilling I don't really recommend. Um, the only time I would recommend tilling is if you're regrading your lawn. So if you've got hills and bumps and swales and different things going on in your, in your grass and you really want to get it level off, then tilling might be the best option for you. However, I would recommend looking at just getting topsoil and filling in some of those hills and valleys um, and those holes uh, just to level off the yard. Because what tilling does, when you till soil, um, while it does aerate and it does allow you to amend the soil and all those great things, what the downfall of it is, is you're going to bring weed seeds that are way down there too deep to germinate. You're going to bring them up to germination level. And what that's going to do is cause a lot of stuff to grow. So if you have to till, you're going to kill first and then you're going to till once it's dead. And then you're going to wait probably another two or three weeks for all the other stuff to grow, kill again, and then you're ready to seed. Uh, the nice thing about kills all is you can seed a week later. So you can spray this weekend and you can be seeding the next weekend if you need to be. And we'll talk about seed and plugs and all that as well. Um, but that's kind of where you would want to go if you're doing a fresh start. Now, if you think you just need to encourage more uh, uh, Bermuda or Zoysia or St. Augustine in your yard, maybe you're just filling in some spots, then this is where we'll pick up that step. So what the next step is, it, whether you're doing a new lawn or you're overseeding, is compost. Compost, I talk about compost a lot. Um, compost is very, very important, um, especially in the lawn. A lot of us, if we live in newer homes, uh, when they built your home, they stripped off all the good soil and left you with what's left. Um, and what that means is you don't have a lot of organic matter. And organic matter is extremely important when we're trying to establish a lawn. Um, and so what we wanna do is encourage some organic matter to work down into the soil. And by spreading a thin layer of compost, literally a quarter of an inch thick, across the entire lawn will really, really be beneficial over the next two or three years. Because what that's gonna do is as that compost decomposes, it's gonna work its way down in the soil, it's gonna loosen the soil, which is gonna be great. So we'll talk about aeration a little bit later, but it's a natural aerator. It's gonna naturally deep thatch, so it's gonna help break down some of those blades of grass that are still left over, whether you killed it or whether you just mowed it low. Um, so the, the compost is gonna do those two things and it's gonna be a great bedding or a great soil to start your seed. So if we're growing from seed, then the compost is gonna help. And even if we're putting in plugs, the compost is gonna be there to help. And compost is just a natural, all organic, awesome way of getting uh, that organic matter into our soil because our soil can be pretty tough here. Whether it's clay or sand, compost is gonna help you. Uh, so it's, a, it's very beneficial, I think, to uh, invest in your soil because that's where this grass is gonna live its entire lifespan. Um, is in your soil. Now we can do composting over and over again throughout the years. So it doesn't mean that you only are gonna do it right now when you're seeding or plugging. You can encourage, I, we encourage to do this every one to two years, putting a, down a thin layer of compost. It's a natural fertilizer, it's gonna dethatch, and it's gonna loosen your soil. So that would be the next step, whether you're starting from scratch or whether you are, um, whether you're, you're just uh, amending or, 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 or sorry, uh, adding more seed or more plugs to your lawn if you're overseeding, if you're doing anything to kind of rejuvenate or get your lawn going again. Um, composting is gonna be a great step. So let's say we've done that. So we've done, we've done our compost. Now we're starting from scratch or we're overseeding, so we're gonna drop our seed down. So let's talk about seed for a second. We've got a lot of different choices here. I'm gonna talk about Bermuda real quick. A Couple different types of Bermuda. We've got our uh, common Bermuda, which is not necessarily like our wire grass, but it's a very good Bermuda. It's just a, a it's just an easy grade Bermuda. Um, it's going to be in that higher range, so it's going to be somewhere in that three to four inch range is where you're going to get the prettiest look from it. Um, but it's very economical. It's very easy to grow. It's very quick to grow, which means you can spread this and you can get a lawn by the end of the summer. And it covers a large area. 
So this is $29.99, it's a five pound bag and it does 5,000 square feet, one pound per thousand square feet. Now we also carry a hybrid, which is very nice. This is top choice. Um, so this is a, a hybrid Bermuda. This is a uh, two pound bag, I believe, so two pounds. So that's gonna cover 2,000 square feet. Um, and so again, this is just a great option if you want a little bit of that lower, that more that kind of golf course type of Bermuda. Um, this is a really, really good option. So those two are, are the, the Bermuda seeds that we carry. Now we carry our centipede, our Tiff Blair centipede seed as well. So centipede is a really good one. Now this is a big bag, we carry small bags as well. This one covers 20,000 square feet. So it covers a very large area. Um, and we have smaller bags that I think do about 6,000 square feet. Then we've got our zoysia seed. So zoysia, it, this one covers 6,000 square feet. So zoysia uh, can also be grown from seed. And then of course, a lot of people are growing St. Augustine these days. It's a really great grass, especially if you're in a coastal area, but those are done by plug only. So I'll talk about plugs um, now as well. Let me go back to the seed real quick and just tell you, all of your summer grass seeds are very, very fine bladed or very, very small seed, I'm sorry, are very small seeds. Um, so if you've ever looked at a fescue seed or when you think of grass seed, I know the kind of image you think, you think that kind of oblong shape uh, grass seed, uh, but summer grass seeds are very, very tiny, like almost like the size of a grain of salt. Uh, so very, very small grass seed. Uh, so a couple recommendations might be to use a handheld spreader because it helps you control it a little bit easier rather than putting it in a push spreader where this bag that's supposed to do 5,000 square feet, you don't lose it in 1,000 square feet. Uh, this will help you kind of get a nice even spread. It doesn't have to be as perfect as fescue either. That's the nice thing. If you get a clump over here and you miss a little bit of a spot here, it'll fill in because these are all spreading grasses, which makes it very easy to grow, uh, which is why they're more low maintenance. Uh, but they're very fine seeds. Now what you can also do is buy a bag of sand. Um, and of course we carry sand here. So you can buy a bag of sand. What I recommend doing there is get a bag of sand, put it in a wheelbarrow, put it out on a tarp, let it get really, really dry because sand is gonna get natural moisture in the bag. So lay that, that sand out, let it dry out a little bit, and then you can mix it with your grass seed to help it spread a little bit further. And so typically you're gonna do somewhere between about a pound to as much as five pounds per pound of grass seed. Um, I usually recommend a one to one ratio just because it's gonna give you 10 pounds and 10 pounds it would be easier to spread over a 5,000 square foot area than a five, uh, five pound bag of grass seed. So just kind of a little recommendation there. Some people will mix it with fertilizer. I don't love that as much because fertilizer is gonna require a larger opening on your spreader. Um, some people might mix it with lime. Again, those are larger pellets where sand is gonna mimic the same size as your summer grass seeds. Um, so it's gonna be very similar size, which means you can put it on the same spreader setting and it should spread the same distance. Um, if you're looking for spreader settings, most of your bags should have them on there, um, or you can go to their websites and you can find those exact spreader settings. But I love that little handheld spreader. It's very easy to use. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Um, so don't get too worried, whereas fescue, we've become a little bit more uh, perfectionate on how we put down our grass seed uh, because we want it to be very even, and those are individual grasses, um, individual blades of grass. But with summer grasses, if you mess up a little bit, it'll spread, and it, it'll, kind of, it'll kind of naturally take over. Um, so that's what you would want to do. Now, let's say we put down compost. I hope you do that. I recommend it. You spread your compost, and now you're going to put your grass seed down. Um, you put your grass seed down. You can use the handheld spreader. Um, some people will put their grass seed underneath the compost. It might work if you're on a, on a slope. It might help hold the seed in place a little bit better. The problem is it's going to set germination back a few days, um, so to, to up to a week. So it can make your uh, germination kind of take a little bit longer to happen. Uh, but on slopes, it might help you. But I really recommend putting down the compost first and then spreading your seed uh, because it gets it right on the top surface. It gets it right on uh, on top of that compost, it's gonna warm up. And then when, as we water, and I'll talk about watering here in a little bit, as we water, then uh, that's what's gonna help it germinate because the seed's gonna get moist fairly, fairly quickly, and then it's gonna dry out, which is what we wanna do to get seed to germinate. And I'll talk about that uh, in a minute here. Uh, but that's how you would do your grass seed. Now, then what I recommend is just taking like a light metal leaf rake, just like this, and just going through and raking the grass seed into the soil a little bit. And what that's gonna do is help spread it a little bit more evenly. It's also going to um, allow that soil to kind of cover it up just slightly. Um, so it's gonna just help kind of even everything out, make it look really nice. So if you put down compost, you put down your grass seed, go through with a light, a light uh, metal leaf rake, uh, and that will really help kind of spread that seed a little bit more evenly and just kind of 
help you kind of feel a little better about making sure that you got seed to soil contact. That's what's very important. Now, if you're not redoing your lawn, that's why I hope you put down compost. If you're just putting down seed to kind of help, like Bermuda is a great option. If you're putting down seed to kind of help choke out the weeds over time, compost will help you. Um, and so there, you, again, you just want seed to soil contact. That's very important. Now, plugs. So plugs, if you're going to plug your lawn, I hope you start from scratch. Again, I always think that's better. Uh, you're going to get a more even lawn and you're going to get it quicker. Um, however, if you're not, if you're just putting it in, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer because it's got competing weeds and grasses to compete with. But regardless, hopefully you put down compost. And then we've got our plugs. So we've got plugs in St. Augustine and Zoysia. And here, I'll hold these up. Maybe you can see that. So that's Zoysia. Very nice grass, carpet-like, gorgeous grass. This is St. Augustine. These are plugs here. Really nice grass. A lot of people love this grass. It can grow well in the sun or the shade, so it's very versatile. Um, and then I've got Bermuda down here. So then Bermuda looks like this. So again, you can kind of see that. Um, but our plugs come in a three by three plug. So I'll show you what that looks like. Take one of these St. Augustine plugs out. So there's our plug. It's a three by three, uh, three inch by three inch square plug. It's a nice hardy plug. Good soil depth, very easy to kind of pull out of the tray and pop in there. You get 18 plugs per tray. Um, spacing is probably the biggest issue here and, and how to figure that out. Um, and I'm not gonna go through the formula right now, but basically what you wanna do is give us your square footage. Let us know your length and the, and the width of the area you're dealing with. And then whether you wanna plug them six inches, 12 inches, or 18 inches apart. And you wanna do that in a checkered board pattern. Um, and so it's very easy to do. Uh, we've actually got this great handy tool that, that will help you when you're plugging. So this is a three by three square. It's got these kind of, you know, this kind of claw down here basically. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna push this into your soil. It's gonna pop this thing up, up here. It's gonna pop up. Your soil plug is gonna be in there. You pop that out and then you can drop your plug right in. And so this is designed specifically for a three by three plug. So we got this really handy tool that's gonna save your back a lot of trouble. Now, if you're only planting a tray or two, you might not need that. Uh, but if you're planting 10, 15, 30 trays, it'll save your back a lot of grief if you use that tool. It really does help. Um, so we put our compost down. We're going to plug our lawn, um, and we plug it, and we're going to plug. Uh, we recommend 12 inches. You can do it as far as 18 inches. You can do it as close as 6 inches. But that's what's going to encourage a good growth habit, checkerboard pattern. So then we're going to plug our lawn. Now, before we put our plug in the hole, what we recommend is – uh, a couple different things that you can do, but Biotone Starter is my favorite. Anytime you can get Biotone Starter to the roots of a plant, you should do it. So whether you're planting annuals, trees, shrubs, perennials, plugs, anything, vegetables, herbs, anything that you're putting into the ground, if you can get Biotone Starter around the root system at the time of planting, it's going to be hugely beneficial to you. This is packed with beneficial bacteria and mycorrhizae, and mycorrhizae and beneficial bacteria attach themselves to the roots and they form a symbiotic relationship with the plant. And what they're gonna do is transfer uh, minerals and, and salts and, and sugars and be able to help each other out. So the, the mycorrhizae and the beneficial bacteria are gonna take the things the plant don't need and they're gonna give back what the plant does need. And these have been in a soil, in our soil naturally for millions and millions of years. We just have discovered them over the past 20 to 30 years and now we can get them right to the root system and encourage more development of them. Um, and these are going to stay with the plant for the entire lifespan of the plant. So it's a great time to do that. So you could just put a tablespoon of this into each hole and drop your plug on it. You get that direct contact. It gets right into the root system. It's a good starter fertilizer as well. Now, another option might be a starter fertilizer that you can put right into the hole. Or some people love the root stimulator, which is also a good option. This is a liquid. It goes right to the root system. And again, this is loaded with phosphorus, and phosphorus is what develops root system. And so whenever you're looking at your fertilizer numbers, that middle number is what develops root system. Um, and so that's what you're going to get with root stimulator as well as a new lawn starter fertilizer. And biotone is going to be loaded with those beneficial bacteria. So that's what we recommend putting right in the hole with your plug. It really will help your plugs get a good start. And then you're ready to roll. So whether we've seeded or whether we've plugged, then now it's time to water. Watering is very important. Um, C is going to be slightly different than maybe plugs, uh, but typically when you first put in a lawn, whether it's plug or seed, you're going to water pretty aggressively for the first couple weeks. For, for the first one to two weeks, I want you to water every morning. I don't want you to water at night. Dampness and darkness cause fungus. And so by while you won't cause a fungus on the seed necessarily, 
But as we get warmer and our temperatures warm up and we had those, those highs in the middle part of the day where it gets the warmest is in the middle part of the day, we want it to have moisture available. And if you water at night, the moisture is not going to be there. Also, dampness and darkness cause fungus, and we don't want to encourage that as well. So I want you to get in the habit of watering early in the morning. Um, and so that's what we want you to do. So for the first one to two weeks, you're going to water every morning an inch of water. So I know most of you are probably saying to yourself, I don't know how to measure an inch of water. How do I, how do I know what an inch of water is? Well, I got a simple explanation to help you kind of figure that out. Use a tuna can or a Tupperware dish, something that doesn't have to be an exactly an inch deep, but something that, you know, if it's three inches, that's fine. And then measure off an inch. Then turn on your watering system, whether you've got an in-ground system or whether you're going to use a, you know, oscillating sprinkler. Uh, you can use that as well, as well as a turret sprinkler, the ones that kind of go, you know, back and forth. Um, any kind of sprinkler system, however you want to devise it, it's very easy to do. We can also help you with that. We've got timers and stuff. So we've got these little timers. So if you're going to work um, or you can't be there, you can set your, you know, your sprinkler system. You can put your timer on and then you can rest assured that no, it's going to be turned off. But how long do you water? So what you're going to do is you're going to put that tuna can or that Tupperware dish out there for the first time you water and measure how long it takes to fill that up, to get to an inch level. Then you know how long to run your sprinkler. And you might have to do different zones. Um, water pressure is always different. So one zone, you know, one area might get slightly different rainfall or, or water, uh, watering requirements as, as another area. But an inch of water is what we want. And it doesn't have to be exact, but we want to get pretty close to an inch of water. Because what that's going to do is give you a deep watering. And deep watering is what we really recommend. Because as we go along those watering schedule, it's always going to be an inch of water. So we're going to water an inch of water every morning for the first one to two weeks. Typically, I recommend two weeks. Then I want you to start to cut it off, start to go back. Now, with seed, we're going to water every morning for one to two weeks until it germinates. Once it germinates, which is typically about 10 to 14 days, depends on soil temperature. Right now, we're still cool and you got time. And that's kind of one thing that I forgot to mention. You have time. So if you're kind of worried about, oh, I'm not really quite ready to do my lawn, don't worry, you've got time. We're still experiencing some cool temperatures. Our soil temperature is not really where it needs to be for seed to be put in yet. Um, however, I think you're okay if you did. Um, but 10 to 14 days is our typical germination period uh, for all your grasses by seed. Of course, with plugs, you've got your grass, and there you're watering your grass. So seed, water until it germinates, and then we're going to continue to water for another one to two weeks after that with an inch of water every morning. Then I want you to start cutting off. And the point here is we want to get the grass to be able to defend or to be able to find its own water source and be able to be on its own. So if you've got an irrigation system, I even recommend this for you, um, is watering less often. But when we water, water deep. And that's what I always say, whether it's a tree or shrub. And the reason being is if you give it water every single morning, then the grass is never going to develop a good root system. It knows it's going to get the water. And this goes for any plant. If you're giving it water all the time, you know, every morning, it knows it doesn't need to find it. So it's not going to search for it. So put it through a little bit of stress, meaning start to cut off, go to every other day. So then on those days where it doesn't get water, it's going to start to develop a root system and start to search for water. Then I want you to go to every third day for a week. I wanted you to get to a point where you're watering one time a week. And that goes for even people with irrigation systems is that's the best way to kind of develop a very deep root system. These grasses get very deep root systems two, three feet deep in the soil, but the only way to encourage that is to push them and make them find their own water. So we're, we're trying to develop that root system, and that's the best way to explain that, is an inch of water once a week is where we want to get to. Um, and then rainfall, if we get rainfall, that's its water. So you don't need to water it as long as it's an inch. That's why I love rain gauges. Uh, you can just get a simple rain gauge, put it in your yard. If we have a rain like we did last night, was that an inch? Well, I don't know, let me go check my rain gauge. Um, so now I know I don't need to water the rest of the week. Um, so rain gauges really help. You can also find that information on most of your weather channels and weather uh, uh, websites. Um, but that's great. So that's how you want to kind of do your watering is you want to water deep, less often, push your grass a little bit to find its own water source. It'll save you some money and it'll save you some heartache because if you're watering every day with an irrigation system and then all of a sudden it breaks down for four or five days, then you're kind of, the grass is going to probably suffer and it could die because it's used to getting the water every day. So do push it a little bit and that does help develop a better root system. So now we've got our lawn and it's growing. Um, so one thing that I forgot to mention was with grass seed, if you want to put down a starter fertilizer, this is a great option. You can put down our new lawn starter made by Fertilone. 
Um, but we carry this in bigger bags, obviously. This is just a smaller bag that I was using for the plugs. Um, but you can get a bigger bag if you want to spread this over the entire lawn. I do recommend fertilizing grass once it is established and once it's rolling, once it's getting going. Um, so we'll talk about fertilizers now because that's really the next step. We've got our grass. Maybe you've put down the new lawn starter. I hope you did. That's a great addition to this um, program. But now we want to fertilize our grass. Um, and so, and it, sorry, I forgot to mention, our new lawn starter also comes, uh, we've got a Spoma's organic new lawn starter as well. So you've got an organic option as well with that. Uh, but now we want to talk about fertilizing. I would love for you to get three to four fertilizations, uh, plant uh, to, to feed your lawn three to four times this summer. Um, and so what we want to do is typically we should be there by June. We want a June, a July, an August, and a September feed. Um, if you only get three done or if you only get two done, that's okay. Uh, at least try and get two uh, applications of fertilizer down. Um, so with our Bermuda, we're going to recommend our classic lawn food. This is our classic lawn food right here. It does 5,000 square feet. We've got a 10,000 square foot bag as well. Um, or with your St. Augustine, uh, Zoysia, or Centipede, we're going to use our St. Augustine weed and feed. So I'll hold this bag up because a lot of people uh, might not know about this, but this is a great fertilizer. It's got a weed killer in it as well as a plant food. Very easy to apply. If you're using this, a couple different recommendations here because a lot of people use this on their St. Augustine is don't apply it. The first application shouldn't be done until about mid-April. And what we're talking about is really how much green you're seeing. So once your St. Augustine gets to about 50% green, that's when you want to apply this. And the reason we say that is we don't want to kick it out of dormancy. If it's completely dormant and it's not greening up at all, and we put down the St. Augustine weed and feed, and that fertilizer activates it on a couple, let's say we get a warm week, and it gets rolling, and it starts to germinate, or it starts to, to, to come out of dormancy, um, and then all of a sudden we get a cold snap. Having a fertilizer pushing it to grow during that period is not going to help it, because all of a sudden that cold snap is going to come through, and it can really damage the grass. Now, the weed killing side of this, while works, it works great. Uh, the way to make it work the best is to mist down your lawn first so that all your weeds have a little moisture on them. And then when you spread your granulars, we hope that some of those weed killing granulars stick to the weed leaves. Um, and that's how you get the weed killing part of this weed and feed to work the best. But really what it's designed for is the fertilizer. It's specifically designed for St. Augustine, Zoysia, and, uh, and centipede. So that's why we carry that one. It's really, really a great fertilizer. The weed killing part of it does work very well. Um, it's just kind of a little bit of a cross your fingers and, and hope those granulars stick to the weed leaves. So it's not gonna be 100% effective. Nothing ever is, um, but it's a very, very good fertilizer. The weed killing part of that, I'll talk about a little bit later as we talk about liquid weed killers uh, to, to help kind of control the weeds in the lawn. But that's how you wanna do it. So whether we're starting a new lawn or whether we're plugging our lawn, we want to, of course, spread compost down if you can. Then we want to put our seed, our plugs in the ground, uh, then we want to water, 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 water. Very important to know how to water. Um, and then we want to start our fertilization. We want to do that once a month through June, July, August, and September, uh, Whether if we're starting new. Now, if we've got an established lawn, you're going to start fertilizing much earlier. And then you can break it apart to every other month. Uh, if you're going to do two or three fertilizations in a, in a year, you can break it apart that way. And then a uh, last thing on our list really is, uh, or two different things, two last steps, is a winter survival which winter survival I don't have right now because we don't need it yet, um, but we'll have it. We carry it in the fall, uh, fall to winter time frame, And that is going to be loaded with potassium. And potassium, whenever you look at your fertilizer numbers, the first number is nitrogen, which encourages green growth. The middle number is phosphorus, and that encourages root growth. And then the last one is potassium, which is an all-around protector. So an easy way to remember that is up, down, all around. And that's how you always remember what your numbers are doing um, on your fertilizer. Um, so that last number is potassium. It's an all-around protector. It's going to help your summer lawns get through our tough winters. If we have a tough winter, uh, which we haven't had many of those recently, uh, which has been good for our, for our lawns, um, but if we have a very extremely cold winter, potassium is going to help protect it through those winter months. And that's why we would encourage winter survival. So if you want to do any of those, again, that's going to be in your information. If you go and download those, uh, as soon as we can get them uploaded for you from this class, um, that'll be great to, to apply that. Usually we're going to do that as it starts to green down or when it's completely dormant. So somewhere in that October to December time frame is when we want to put down the winter survival. And that's really the basics of it. I mean, I'm trying to keep it as simple and short to, and to the point as, as I can. As we get into weed control, we'll talk about that for just a minute. 
that would be the only added step. Once you have an established lawn, then we're talking about just fertilizing, watering every once in a while, and weed control. And that's what I'll talk about next is, is how to control weeds in your lawn. Obviously, that's the most important, one of the most important steps. Uh, we carry dimension, which is a great pre-emergent. Um, and then we carry a couple post-emergents. And so I think that's probably the best recommendation is, is what's the difference between a pre-emergent and a post-emergent. Pre-emergents are going to prevent anything from emerging from the soil. So you got to get this down before those weed seeds germinate. Now, typically, crabgrass is one of our biggest problems. That's going to start germinating here pretty soon. Uh, we, we just went through our chickweed and henbit clover season. Um, so that starts in the cooler parts of the year. So you can put this down if you're if you're putting down grass seed, you cannot apply this product because it's going to prevent anything from germinating. If you're putting down plugs, you can put this down. So you got a couple of different options there. Um, again, every lawn is different. And so whatever your situation might be, we can help kind of formulate a system from what works for you, so especially to get started. But once you're started, we typically are going to recommend putting this down in the fall and spring. Um, the spring application comes in a kit form where we basically are gonna give you two bags of this. One bag does 5,000 square feet. We recommend putting it down in late February, early March. That's when henbit, chickweed, clover start to germinate, dandelions. Um, so all of those weeds are gonna to start to germinate around that time frame, and this is gonna prevent them from germinating. So you gotta get this down early to really get it working. Now, if, it, if you can't get it down early enough, or you do have some weeds that it misses, because again, nothing's 100%, uh, but if you can't get this down or you got some weeds, then what we're going to give you is a small bottle of this. This is weed free zone. This is the big hose in sprayer. Uh, but you get an eight ounce bottle with the kit. So you get two bags of dimension and an eight ounce bottle of weed free zone. And weed free zone is awesome. It can work on any type of grass. So you don't have to worry about the type of grass. And it works as long as the temperatures are above 45 degrees. So this is going to be your post emergent. This is going to be what you're going to spray to kill weeds after they have emerged from the soil. We also carry a natural guard uh, selective weed killer. So if you want to be organic, we do have that as well. We also have our organic Espoma weed preventer, which is corn gluten. Now this is going to last two to three months. Corn gluten is going to last somewhere around four to six weeks. So depending on your soil, depending on mother nature, depending on a lot of different things, uh, this one's going to last about four to six weeks. This one's going to last about two to three months. Um, so again, depending on weather, depending on soil, a lot of different scenarios that can occur there. But the reason you get two bags of this in our spring weed control kit or our fall weed control kit, because we carry it again in the fall, um, is that you're going to put down one application in that late February, uh, early March time frame, and then you're going to do it again in you're, this is going to work through March and April, and then you're going to put it down again in June, uh, May, and then that's going to cover you through May and June. So you've got you got your cover through the early weed season, and then you got your coverage through the crabgrass season as well. Now, again, nothing's 100%, so we do offer different things. So you got your post emergent with weed free zone. Hopefully, you can use that while it's dormant. The only time you don't want to use this is directly after a mow. So you don't want to go out there and mow your grass. And then go out there and spray. You've got open wounds. It won't kill your grass, but it could yellow it, could hurt it a little bit. And we don't want to do anything to hurt our lawn. So allow that grass to start to regrow. And actually, the bigger the weeds, the easier they are to kill because you got more surface area to spray. That's how liquid weed killers work. You spray the liquid on the leaf of the, of the weed, and then it's drying in the sun. And when it dries in the sun, this goes into work and goes and kills it down to the root system. So weed free zone is your cool weather killer. Now, we get into the summer months and we've got some crabgrass issues. Then we've got our weed out with Q, which is, um, or sorry, weed out with crabgrass killer, which will kill crabgrass, uh, as well as a lot of other broadleaf weeds. So a really, really good one. This one you want to use on your Bermuda lawns. This one you want to use on your St. Augustine lawns, the atrazine. So atrazine is safe. This one has quinclorac in it, which will hurt St. Augustine. Uh, so you don't want to use this on St. Augustine. Yes, to St. Augustine. So atrazine is what you're going to see in our St. Augustine weed and feed in a granular form. This is atrazine in a liquid form. Now, I love liquids for post-emerging control because you can put them in a pump sprayer. If you do not have a pump sprayer, you should get one. Pump sprayers are very, very important to have when you are doing a lawn. Let's see if I can get a good picture. There we go. So pump sprayers are very, very important for any gardener. Um, they're a very way, uh, easy way to apply um, any kind of liquid, whether you're doing a fertilizer, a weed killer, a total killer, or you're applying a weed controller, a post-emerging control, because you can get it directly right to the root system. These are great if you've got a problem over the entire yard, these hose-in sprayers. You can go out there and spray the entire lawn and be done very quickly. The problem is you're going to waste a little bit of product. So if you've got a little bit of weed issues, 
you know, you got patches here and there. I love my pump sprayer because you can fill it up and you know you're spraying the weeds as you go around the yard. You use less of it um, and you don't waste any of it. Um, and you're getting directly right onto that leaf and you get a nice fine mist on there and that's what's gonna kill it effectively. So I love my pump sprayer. Now we of course do carry, Let's see if I can find it. You know, just a normal hose in sprayer. Those you're just gonna pour your product in there. So we're just gonna take our atrazine here, pour it into this, set it to the right setting, and then we're gonna go out there, attach the hose, it'll mix it as you spray. Just like this will do, it'll mix it as it sprays, so will a hose-in sprayer. So hose-in sprayers are very important to a, a good gardener out there as well, um, as well as a pump sprayer, so pump sprayers are very important too. So that's how we can kind of control weeds in our yard. Uh, so in the summer, we're looking at crabgrass control, the kit's really going to help you. You can use an or organic weed preventer. We have organic solutions to kill weeds. We also have our traditional solutions as well. Now, what a lot of people might say is I've got a really bad lawn and I really need to get kind of going. We might recommend the traditional solutions just to get you started, but you really want to do an organic lawn, then we can get you there. It just might be something that we phase in a little bit later. If you want to go straight organic, straight from the start, great. We can help you do that as well. Just might be a little bit more time. It takes a little bit more time to kind of encourage that. But the benefit of organics is the more that we use them, of course, the, the better it is for our, our bay and, and for our, our local watersheds, um, but it's also beneficial for the grass. So getting there is important to us. We do realize that sometimes we got to get it started and we got to give it a little bit more of a boost. But I always tell people traditional methods are kind of like a drug. Um, and, you know, it needs it. It's going to need it every year. You're going to need to keep on giving it to it. And it's fine as long as you apply it by the directions. You don't do it right before we get a huge rainfall and it washes down the drain. Water these products in. We definitely recommend watering your granular fertilizers in so that it gets down to the root system. It stays in the soil um, and it can be used by the grass. And then organic solution or organic fertilizers are great because they're not harmful to the, the wildlife. Um, but also they have there's beneficial bacteria, like I mentioned in the biotone. So what they're going to do is over time, they're actually going to be pulling nutrients from the atmosphere and allowing nutrients, more nutrients to be formed in the soil um, that will feed the plants over time. And that's what's great about organics is, is as we continue to use more and more, then that's naturally being built up in the soil anyways, requires less fertilizer, less time, much more low maintenance for you. But again, these are offered as well, um, as well as the organic solutions because we want to be able to offer both because sometimes this is important and sometimes we need to work our way towards this. So of course we've got both options for you. Now, let's talk about insects and disease for just a short minute. Uh, not a lot of insect or disease issues here with Bermuda or Zoysia or St. Augustine or Centipede. Not a lot. Sometimes we can get some, some fungus issues. The good news is we've got solutions for them. So if you ever start to feel like you've got a fungus issue occurring, uh, we've got F-stop control. Uh, F-stop is very easy to use. It's a systemic fungicide, so it's going to go into the system of the plant and last there for a while, so it's very easy to uh, use. We've got it in a hose-in applicator as well as a granular form, so we've got those options. Um, and then we've also got um, uh, lots of insecticides as well that you can spread over the entire yard, uh, granular forms that help with chinch bugs. If you've ever had chinch bugs and you're St. Augustine, you know those can be a pain, but we've got solutions for you there as well. I don't want to talk at length about fungicides or insecticides because hopefully you won't need them. Uh, and if you're probably tuning in, you probably are trying to figure out how to get a new lawn started. And that's what we're really talking about here. If you ever experience a problem, know that we're here for you. We know this area very well. We've been in Hampton Roads for 75 years. Uh, so we know this area very well. It's a very cool area to be in because of all the different types of grasses that we can grow. Um, and so we've got lots of different options here. Um, so let's review real quick the simple basics before I come over and answer your questions. I know you probably have lots of questions. Um, but the simple kind of basic idea here is if you're starting from scratch, kill everything. I definitely recommend it. It's better not to have competing grasses and weeds uh, with your new lawn. Um, so kill everything, start from scratch, put down a thin layer of compost, whether you're overseeding or you just want to encourage your new lawn amongst your other lawn uh, grasses that you already have, put down a thin layer of compost. It really does help. It adds a lot of um, uh, organic matter that's really going to help stimulate growth, hold in moisture, aerate the soil, dethatch, all those great things. It's awesome. It does a lot of different things for you. So definitely recommend putting down compost. Uh, then we're going to seed or we're going to plug. We do those. We get those established. We're going to water. 
Uh, definitely important to know how to water and the watering requirements every one to two weeks for the first week with seed till it germinates, then do it for one to two weeks. And then we're going to start to cut off every other day for a week, every third day for a week to the point where we're watering one time a week an inch of water. So I hope that helps you there with, with the watering requirements. Of course, if it's been 100 degrees, uh, hasn't rained in, in a week, we might need to apply a little bit more water. Just watch the weather forecast and kind of know what's kind of going on in your yard. But that will help you with watering. Watering is super important. Fertilize, we hope to get three or four fertilized applications. And in a season, we can do new lawn starter. We can do classic lawn food. We can do St. Augustine weed and feed. Winterizer in the fall. You got lots of options there. Basically, if you're not going to do the weed and feed, basically what we want to do is just get three applications at best. So we want to do June, July, and August. Um, and then we want to do a winter riser in the fall, new lawn starters and add on there if you want to do that as well. Uh, we've got lots of different things that you can do throughout the entire season. I don't even know that I've talked about everything, but fertilizing is super, super important. So make sure to fertilize um, throughout the entire growing season so that it can develop a, a good, strong uh, top growth as well as a nice, strong root system as well. Uh, so we need to fertilize. And then we control. So we control weeds will pop up. They'll show up in bare areas. So if you're plugging, you know, you're going to have some bare spots in between those plugs until they start to grow. We can prevent those with our dimension. We can kill weeds with weed free zone. We can use atrazine or weed out with crabgrass killer to help prevent weeds and crabgrass. Uh, so those are great options as well. Uh, we've got everything that you need to be able to grow one of the best lawns in the block. Um, and, and we've got lots of, of, of um, uh, information here that we're going to make available to you as soon as we possibly can. Um, so I hope that helps. That's kind of a very short, basic version of how to grow a good lawn in this area, specifically talking about Zoysia, St. Augustine, Bermuda, or Centipede. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, I'm going to come over and ask, answer your questions. If you've got questions, continue to, to ask them. Um, I'll come over and ask, answer all your questions. Um, I hope this helps. Um, and I hope that you learned a lot about how to grow some of uh, our, our favorite grasses to grow in this area. So I'll come over and answer your questions. Thanks for coming, and uh, we'll, we'll be doing this again soon. So thanks again. All right. So hello, everybody. Now that I can see everybody's name, Sally. All right. Looks like we're all good. Looks like everybody learned a lot. Why is fescue not good? So fescue is very good. Um, fescue is a great grass. The downfall of fescue is you are typically going to do it. Let's see if I can get a little more light, dark. Um, fescue is uh, something that you're going to be doing uh, consistently over two or three years. Whereas once you have a St. Augustine, Zoysia, Bermuda, Centipede lawn, you got it for life. Um, it's a spreading grass. And so you don't have to worry about uh, individual millions and millions of, of plants that you got to take care of. And inevitably fescue, you're going to lose a little bit of it. So in our summertime, when we get really, really hot, you're going to lose a little bit of fescue. Um, and then you're going to want to overseed in the fall. And it's kind of an over, you know, year after year process of constantly kind of working on that fescue lawn to get it to perfection. Now we can get you there. And if you want to do fescue, we have a great program. We have an amazing grass seed. I'll talk about it in the fall. We don't really want to encourage planting fescue right now. And the reason we don't is because fescue uh, doesn't like our summer season, doesn't like our heat as much. It can make it through there. And there's lots of tips and tricks and everything that we can help you do to, to, to be successful with it. Um, I've grown a fescue lawn for years. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty easy process. Uh, but the problem with doing it now and why we don't want to talk about it right now is because fescue needs to develop a good root system. And so we want to plant it in the fall so it has the longest time before summer hits. And that's when it stresses is in the summer. So if we plant it now in the spring, summer can come in two weeks. I mean, here we are in the early part of May and summer could be here in two weeks, meaning our temperatures are going to start to get into the 80s, 90s. And fescue isn't going to like to grow there. Um, also, there's not enough root system to make it through that time frame. So that's why... I wouldn't say fescue is not good. Fescue is awesome. That's why I love this area because you can grow so many different types of grass and we can help you do a great fescue lawn. The downfall of fescue is you just don't want to do it right now. We recommend doing it in the fall. Um, and, and I'll mention this. I didn't mention in the main portion of the class, but that's why we don't carry a lot of like Scott's products. We're not a national company. Scott's is a great company. I don't carry a lot of their products because they're a national company. They're selling to the entire country. Whereas we can hyper-focus on Hampton Roads. We know this area very well and we know what's going to work the best. And so that's why a lot of like their turf builders or their step or their step programs have a lot of nitrogen in it. And a lot of people that use it on fescue can burn their lawn. 
Um, so if, if you want to do fescue, Denise, then come in and talk to us in the fall. You can come in and start to get some information now if you want to. Um, but if you want to wait, wait, if you can wait, just let grow what's growing. And then in the fall, we can tackle your lawn because I think you'll be more successful if you wait till then. Uh, but fescue is, is a very good grass. Um, Denise said, bought a Southern blend, which is all fescue. Yep. So again, there's lots of different types of blends and typically you want a blend of fescue. Great question, Denise. Um, so uh, lots of fescues come in blends. We have a blend as well. Ours is tested by Virginia Tech right over in Diamond Springs. So literally, you know, right around the corner from here. So we know what grows really well in this area. We take their list um, and we, we pick the top three grasses from that list each year and we put it into our mix. So you have a nice blend of three different types of fescue. And the reason that it's done that way is so that if something happens five, 10 years down the road, uh, hopefully it doesn't. But let's say a disease affects one type of, of, of fescue, then you won't lose your entire lawn. Um, and so that's why we put blends in there. They're developed now for deeper root systems, um, dark color, disease and insect resistance, drought tolerance, uh, all those good things. And so fescue is getting better and better. They just haven't gotten to the point where it's a, a spreading grass. And the problem with, with fescue is you're taking care of millions and millions of plants. So you're gonna lose some, it's natural, um, it's okay. It's just that's why these summer grasses are so sought after now because a lot of us don't have as much time and we don't want to spend as much time on our lawns and summer grasses are very low maintenance. Um, so, yes, if you got a southern blend, I would recommend saving it into the fall if you can. If you've already put it down, that's OK. Some people have to put some seed down in the fall. It's OK. Put it down. You just I, I just want you to have real expectations of knowing that the summer is coming very quickly. And I don't know if you're gonna develop a deep enough root system to make it through the summer months. And that's the that's the downfall of fescue. Need a deeper root system to get through that hot, that hot period. Julie says, best grass seed and or plugs for filling in areas where an active dog has made a dirt track. Great question. So I would recommend um, St. Augustine for plugs if you wanted to, or Bermuda. Either one is very, very tough and durable. They're both very quick growing, um, whereas zoysia takes a little bit more time to get established as well as centipede. They're pretty slow growing to start with. Uh, but St. Augustine, you can do by plugs. Bermuda, if you can keep the dog off for maybe you know a couple of weeks just to kind of get it germinated. Um, but even if not, Bermuda will spread. So if you just get a little bit in there and it starts to grow, it'll spread. Bermuda and St. Augustine both can take a little bit of shade. So that's okay. Uh, what I always tell people about shade areas for their lawns, um, it's St. Augustine. You got to do it by plugs. The problem is with shade, all of your summer grasses are going to run out of the shade. They're going to stay there, but they're not going to go from the sun into the shade. Um, so if you're ever growing uh, uh, St. Augustine or Bermuda uh, in the shade, which is what we would recommend is those two different types. Uh, zoysia really loves sun and so does centipede. Um, but if you're, if you're starting zoysia uh, or sorry, Bermuda or St. Augustine, if you start it in the shade, it'll grow in the shade. But if you start it in the sun, it's not going to grow into the shade. So hopefully that helps you there. Um, but if you've got a dog, Bermuda is probably the most recommended. That's what they use on football fields and golf courses because they're turf areas. They're going to get walked on a lot. Golf courses, they're going to take divots out and that Bermuda will spread back in. So I, I hope that helped answer your question, Julie. Uh, I would recommend Bermuda or uh, St. Augustine. Uh, let's see, Karen, how to best spread the even uh, compost over the lawn? Great question. I did not mention that. Uh, so, so Karen, when you're spreading compost over the yarn, uh, over, over the lawn, uh, if you do it by bag or bulk, then a wheelbarrow, if you're doing it by bulk, just put it in piles around the yard um, or in a bag, just put it in piles around the yard and then just take a hard rake, like a hard work rake um, and push it around until you get a nice thin spread. Um, and basically what we're trying not to do is put down too much compost that can hurt the root system or can hurt the lawn. Um, and, and if you put down compost too thick, it can choke out your grass, your desirable grass, um, it could heat up too much. So when that seed germinates and you've got an inch of compost, um, then uh, that, that root system is going to go straight into the compost. The compost is going to get so hot, you're not going to be able to keep it moist enough and the root system is going to die on that, on that new seedling, that new grass. Uh, but push it around. Again, it doesn't have to be an exact science. We just want to get it as thin as we possibly can especially if you're putting it over grass. If you're putting it on a new lawn, if, you, if, you've, if you've killed everything off and you're starting from scratch, then you should be able to just apply a nice thin layer across the, the lawn area. Uh, but just using a hard rake is what we would recommend there. Uh, you can't put it in a spreader or anything. You can't actually rent those. Uh, they do make compost spreaders uh, that you can rent. 
So I would recommend that maybe if you're dealing with a, with a big area, uh, but for a smaller yard, a normal size yard, 5,000 square feet, just taking bags and dumping them into piles and spreading them around is the best way to do that. Uh, once you have the plugs, so Betsy says, um, once you have the plugs in place, when is it safe to mow? Great question. So you really want to get, you, you should be able to tell as your plugs begin to send out their spreaders out here. So as those kind of grow out, um, once those kind of start to root in a little bit, you should be fine to mow. What you never want to do with grass is cut more than a third of it off. So typically you're going to cut St. Augustine somewhere around uh, three inch height. So you don't want to let it get taller than four inches. So if your plugs start to get four inches tall, then you need to cut them to three inches. Then you go ahead and do it. You shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't have any issues with pulling them up. It's not going to hurt it. Um, sometimes our plugs and our trays get a little tall and we'll go over there and mow them off with a weed whacker or even just with it with a mower. Um, so it's completely safe. It's not going to hurt it. This is an actively growing grass and it's used to being mowed. So you definitely can mow um, as soon as it needs to be. So once it gets to four inches, mow to three inches. That's kind of our recommended height for St. Augustine. Um, can I over, so Denise said, can I overseed a fescue with something new? Um, yes, you can. Um, so Bermuda might be a good option or zoysia or centipede. You definitely can do that. If you're, if you're wanting to convert away from fescue, then now is a great time to kind of consider that. Um, and Bermuda and, and, and zoysia, and even if you did plugs with St. Augustine, um, those are going to choke out fescue fairly quickly. Um, they're going to win that battle is what I'll say. Fescue, individual blades of grass. As that spreading grass comes in, it's going to choke it out. It's going to kill off your fescue. Now, some people will overseed with fescue every fall. Um, you can overseed some of your summer grasses. You can't do zoysia, but you can do St. Augustine, Bermuda, and centipede. You can over overseed with rye. So if you want that year-round green, um, that's how you can do it with, is with rye. Um, but some people will use fescue just because they like the look of fescue more than rye, and it doesn't grow quite as fast as rye. But yes, if you're looking at converting from uh, a fescue lawn to a summer lawn, you definitely can uh, apply something soon right over top of your fescue lawn. It'll eventually kill your fescue lawn is what will happen there. Uh, but it won't, it won't really hold back the Bermuda uh, or the St. Augustine much. And then Denise said, great info, good, I'm glad. Uh, Denise said, not really sure what is currently growing. Well, if you just have um, weeds, um, that's kind of what I mentioned earlier, um, is, is if you just have a natural lawn, if you're not quite sure what's growing in there, I do recommend killing everything off before you start, from, before you put your seed down or before you put plugs down. It's going to give it a much faster start. You're going to get a much fuller lawn much quicker. If you don't have the time to do that and you don't feel like you want to take that step, that's fine. Uh, you can spread a grass seed right over top of that. Again, applying a thin layer of compost will help. Um, it'll help get that seed to soil contact a little bit better. I would mow those weeds or that whatever's growing there, that natural lawn, very low um, to put down my seed or put my plugs in just so that it hurts whatever's there um, and allows your, your new plugs or your new grass seed to kind of get a good start. Um, let's see, anything else? Everybody's saying thank you, Steve, thanks. So everybody, thanks again for joining us. I hope you learned a lot here. Uh, again, this could be a four hour discussion. I mean, I, I briefly, I just wanted to keep it super brief and super simple so that you got the basics. Uh, everybody's lawn is different. Everybody's going to require different things. Everybody's going to ask different questions. Um, so feel free to come in, talk to us, the lawn experts in Hampton Roads for 75 years, uh, whether you want to do a summer grass or a fescue grass, we have lots of different options. Um, everybody's scenarios are different. So hopefully these basic steps help you kind of get an idea of what you want to do and get started. Um, and then we'll continue to be here uh, for you for the life of your lawn. Uh, so continue to come and check us out as we kind of change things and do things differently um, and, and, and develop systems that are designed for him for roads. So again, thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Betsy. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Enjoy the, the weather. Happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. Have a great day.